It's about self-control, people say. It can't be that difficult if you really want to quit. But what is it that makes some people addicted and others not, with the same drinking habits? Deep in the brain, Professor Marcus Heilig has discovered that there seems to be crucial differences. Now he wants to use the findings to set those caught in addiction free. As a doctor, Marcus Heilig has met many people with cirrhosis of the liver and other diseases who continued to drink alcohol even though they knew it was life-threatening. He has seen firsthand how the addiction takes lives. This is so paradoxical and it just so doesn't make sense on a superficial look. I just have to figure out what is it that makes people do things that will harm them that badly. Okay, let's go. With the help of these rats, Marcus Heilig's research group is trying to understand and break the strong forces that control alcohol addiction. Alcoholism has not always been perceived as a disease. It wasn't until the 1990s that this understanding became commonly accepted in the scientific community, and researchers began looking for answers in the brain. Today, around 300,000 people in Sweden have an alcohol addiction to varying degrees. But how does it manifest itself? Normally, moderate amounts of alcohol can have a euphoric effect. But in people with alcohol addiction, frequent and long-term alcohol consumption has altered their biological balance. Lack of alcohol makes them feel bad becoming sensitive to stress, more anxious in general, depressed. The short-term solution to feeling better is to drink. That happens quickly and effectively at the expense of this process of dysregulation just being pushed even further and getting even worse. At the age of 10 in 1968, Marcus Heilig, as a refugee from Poland, came to Sweden. And in the neighborhood where his family was placed, he saw the destructive power of alcohol up close. I had uh, friends, classmates, who uh, ultimately ended up uh, being uh, drawn into drug use, alcohol use, dying from overdose. That was where my curiosity and my passion started, and they're still rooted there. So this is the self-administration box, and on one side we put the alcohol solution, on the other side is the sweet solution, and we use saccharin. In this experiment, they want to see if there are rats who prefer alcohol over a normal reward such as sugar water. And now the rat is ready to press. But this particular rat doesn't seem to want either sweets or alcohol. Do you think if we turn off the light? Yes, we can try with the red light yeah. and see. Rats are nocturnal. They cannot see red light, so they perceive this as darkness. And now it's game time. Two clicks on the controller, the lamp lights up, and the rat is served in the small metal box. On this side of the box is alcohol. Although rats love sugar, Marcus Heilig's research group discovered that a few prefer the alcohol, and that a few of those continue choosing alcohol even when the decision leads to something negative, like an electric shock. These research rats are one of Marcus Heilig's tools for trying to understand addictive diseases in humans. And the team has succeeded in finding differences in the brains of the rats who prefer the alcohol reward. The differences are deep in the brain, in the central amygdala. There is a gene here that is expressed to a lesser extent in the rats who turn away from alcohol. 
The gene, being not fully turned on, leads in the long run to the accumulation of a substance called GABA. The team could also see that a special group of nerve cells were activated. Exactly how these findings are connected is not yet known. But both observations are believed to be linked to a shift in the balance in the brain. Now you affect those cells, you turn down their activity, and lo and behold, the compulsivity stops or becomes reduced. Marcus Heilig's research group has succeeded in shutting down these special nerve cells that are active in the addicted rat brain. These cells have been known about for a long time and are called fear of cells. When they are activated, people behave impulsively. But are these the same mechanisms in the brains of humans? And can the mechanisms be switched off in a similar way? The next step is to study this using a magnetic camera. What's the feedback from the current tribe versus the running total? In the brains of the subjects, it has actually been possible to see the brain activity similar to that in the rats. In the future, drugs for treatment of alcohol addiction will be tested directly in magnetic cameras to see if they have an effect. Marcus Heilig's hope is to develop a drug which in the amygdala will suppress the release of GABA, the substance that accumulates in excess in the brains of alcohol addicts. With a medicine such as this, they could refrain from alcohol and feel good without it. In academia, you compete for so many things. You compete for positions, for grant funding, for getting good papers out. The thing that really matters is being able to bring a medication for the benefit of patients. I would be just much more happy than with any prestigious paper, award, grant, or anything.